Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and this is my review on the Husingfeld Engineering Sim Shifter Sequential. Now, this is my first time owning a dedicated sequential shifter. In the past, I've mainly focused on the hybrid shifters, such as the Fanatic Club Sport Shifter or the Thrustmaster TH8 series. Those tend to be a jack of all trades, master of none situation. They tend to work pretty well with the H pattern shifter, but the sequential, in my opinion, in both those shifters leave a bit to be desired. That's where a dedicated sequential shifter comes in. With a dedicated sequential shifter, you are able to be specialized in one element of shifting, namely shifting up and shifting down. So this does both of those really well. However, there are a couple gripes that I would say would keep me from recommending this to everybody. The Husing Bell Engineering Sim Shifter Sequential retails for around 172 euros or around 200 US dollars. That's around par for the course from what I've been finding for dedicated sequential shifters. For example, coming up, I will be reviewing the AIO Log Sequential Shifter, which retails for about $160, but then add in $45 for worldwide shipping and you get about $205. So that is about par for the course for a dedicated sequential shifter from what I've found. And yeah, so this is pretty good value for what you get. The first thing you'll notice with this shifter though is it is tiny. At the base, it is only 50 millimeters tall. In the smaller configurations of this shifter, it is literally about the size of a soda can. Now keep in mind that this shifter is likely a little less delicious, so I wouldn't really recommend putting it in your mouth. While this is a tiny shifter, this packs a punch. All the components in it are well built and solid and has a great professional feel to it. The shift knob, even though it is made out of a plastic, feels very sturdy and very durable. I have no doubt in my mind that this shifter could hold up to years and years of shifts. The small size of the shifter also allows you to mount it into very compact areas. For example, Remco Hitman, one of the staff members of Houston Valley Engineering, shared with me his upcoming project, which is him building a cockpit based off of early 90s Formula One car designs. And in that, he is using this shifter because it is designed to fit in those classic Formula One style situations. While there is mounting hardware to mount this onto other cockpits, this shifter's smaller design, I don't think would work well on a lot of consumer grade cockpits. For example, I don't think this would perform too well on my GT Omega Art cockpit. However, this does use a fairly universal design, so I could get an M10 shifter extender and that could work well on this shifter and maybe allow me to use it on more conventional consumer grade cockpits. One thing I do want to mention is be careful while mounting the shifter. These have two bolts on either side of the shifter and those bolts are structurally integral to the unit. If you remove those, you need to keep pressure on the shifter or else this could literally fall apart in your hands. Thankfully, the design for the shifter is fairly decent so if it does fall apart, it's not too difficult to put back together. However, it is a little bit of a nuisance. On the other side of the shifter, you have the circuit board protected by a layer of acrylic. On the circuit board, you have a micro USB connector to plug your shifter into the computer. And you also have another nifty feature. There is a female micro Molex connector on the circuit board, and that could allow you to connect it to an external USB controller. For example, you could actually plug this shifter into the Husingfeld Engineering pedal circuit board, and that would allow you to save on one USB device. So now let's get on to the important part, how the shifter performs. Thankfully, I can say this shifter performs great. With this shifter, it has a ball bearing rocker design. So it has a heavy initial force when you're pulling on a shifter, and then it releases which is very similar to a real race car shifter. So you get that great feel from the shifter. The only thing I might say I'm missing is a bit of that tactile click. One of the great things about this design of the shifter is that the buttons are directly mounted onto the circuit board. And with the rocker design, there are a couple levers that will trip the switches and register the shift. With this shifter though, 
that means you don't get that tactile click from a button that you might get from another dedicated sequential shifter. So this is definitely a quieter shifter, which some people might not like, but hey, on the bright side, if you're looking for a quieter shifter, you might be in luck. One other cool feature of the shifter, as I kind of alluded to before, is the fact that you can customize it. Out of the box, the shifter comes with three shift levers and three shift knobs. You can customize those and find a combination that you like the most. For me personally, I found that the bent rod lever and the long shift knob work best for me, but hey, you have your own choices. And also, since I mentioned before that this is a universal design, you could find another M10 shift knob or an M10 shift lever, and that would work just fine as well. The Husingfeld Engineering Sim Shifter Sequential is an absolutely amazing shifter. I love driving with it. It's a lot of fun. However, I find myself wondering if it's a little over-engineered for its own good. The shifter checks off all of the boxes for a great sequential shifter. However, it's those minor quirks, those minor frustrations that keep me from recommending this no-brainer to everyone. If Husingfeld Engineering made a couple minor tweaks to make this shifter a little more convenient, a little more accessible for the masses, I would be able to just recommend this without a doubt. But as is, even though it is an absolutely amazing shifter, I'd say figure out what you're looking for and do your research before pulling the trigger. And now, let's get on to my pros and cons, and as always, let's start with the pros. Very compact design, well engineered. Reasonably priced for what you get. Reliable, able to stand up to heavy use. Different shift lever and knob options. Authentic shifter feel. Ability to connect to pedal circuit board to save on USB ports. Can utilize aftermarket M10 shift knobs or extensions. And now, let's get on to the cons. May not be the best design for all cockpits. Can fall apart relatively easily if you're not careful. Personally, I would have liked to have a more tactile click in the shifting. So the question is, do I recommend the Husingfeld Engineering Sim Shifter Sequential? Well, it's a bit of a tricky situation. I freaking love this shifter. It is amazing. I love the feel of it. It checks off all the boxes for a great sequential shifter. However, I will concede the fact that it might not be for everyone. Mostly, the main gripe I have is that it might not work on all kinds of cockpits. This is a very compact design. It is designed that way. It's designed to be a compact shifter, and in turn, it kind of needs to be mounted higher up. For example, if you mount this on a consumer grade cockpit's shifter mount, you would likely need to make some minor modifications, make the shifter taller, and then it would work a little better. So you would need to keep that in mind. So my thought is, do your research, research this shifter, research how it would be able to fit on your cockpit, before pulling the trigger. So I hope you enjoyed my review on the Husingfeld Engineering Sim Shifter Sequential. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe and help keep us on track. For the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a good one.